Hello, good tag and welcome to another YouTube video. In today's YouTube video, I want to walk you through my Red Komodo X Cine rig, and this has been a highly requested video. Unfortunately, it took a while to gather all the individual parts and it's still not 100% complete, but I don't want to wait any longer. So without further ado, I want to show you my Red Komodo X Cine rig. In today's rig video, we're going to do it a little differently than I usually do, and I will not build this out live in front of you because currently I only own two cameras, and that is the Red Komodo and the one that I'm filming on right now, so I don't have a second angle. So I will just overlay it with B roll, close up shots of the different parts, and me using this rig in action. Before I start talking about the individual parts, I want to walk you through why I built out the camera the way that I did and how I intend on using it in the future. If you're not interested in this because it might be a little longer, then there are timestamps down below the video so you can jump right into the portion where I talk about the individual parts. When building out the Cine Rig version of the Red Komodo X, I really want it to be as versatile as possible. And I want to use it not only for my own projects, but also when I'm being hired as a DP or a director or basically any other position on set, I like to rent out my camera to the production. And therefore, I want it to be as versatile as it can be. And here's a perfect example for it. Last summer, I was hired as a DP for a multi-day shoot. And even a day before we started shooting, the producer couldn't tell me if they are using basin anamorphics or if they're using atlas anamorphics. They wanted to rent out everything else from my Red Komodo X, but I don't own any anamorphic lenses yet, so I could only rent out the entire camera package without the lenses. But like I said, they were unsure which kind of lenses they were using. The Vazen anamorphics have a 95 mm outer diameter and they are F mount and the Atlas anamorphics are 114 mm diameter and they either come in an EF or a PL mount version. And this makes a huge difference in how I need to rig out my camera. If I'm shooting with a PL mount, I could use an RF to PL adapter with drop in ND filters, but if I'm using an RF mount, I don't have that luxury, so I need to have some kind of front filtration. So here I wanted to accommodate all kinds of different scenarios and different lenses, RF mounts, EF mounts, PL mounts, without any compromises, with the highest quality possible. This rig is also not meant to be used as a solo shooter and you do require at least a focus puller to be able to use this rig in its entirety and you can use it with a small crew but you could also use it with a really large crew. So now that we got this out of the way let's start with the actual build. And first things first, as the base for my Red Komodo X Cine rig I used the Bright Tangerine Advanced Kit and this consists of a cage that includes two side ribs as well as one top plate and we also have a riser plate underneath and then we have another plate which has a quick release mount so I could go from just the camera to this entire rig underneath with a dovetail quick release plate. And this has been a game changer for me because it is so easy to maneuver your camera from handheld to gimbal to slider and back onto my tripod. Here on the side you have a lever and if you want to open this half then you can slide the camera back and forth onto your dovetail which is really nice to make fine adjustments and then if you want to get it off all the way you can just side unload it which makes a huge difference and it's so nice and quick to just go from sticks to handheld or if you want to put it somewhere else and rig it to a car, a gimbal, steady cam, whatever you want to do. And then you can just easily put it back up here, close it, and now it's secured back onto your dovetail. Underneath here I also have some 15 millimeter carbon fiber rods and this is being used to attach more stuff to it, like my side handles. And this is the Bright Tangerine Caspa system. And this is really amazing because it's so easy to just maneuver and it's really comfortable. Those are the most comfortable side handles that I have ever used. And if I want to shoot handheld with this camera and hook it up to an easy rig because it gets quite heavy after a while, then you can do so by just placing the side handles on either th side of the camera and then you have an amazing grip. It feels really comfortable and you have full control over maneuvering your camera, especially when it's on an easy rig. None of this requires tools, so if you just want to change the position of your handles, you can easily do so just within seconds. And if you want to use this for a shoulder rig, for example, which I will not go into in this episode because it will take way too long, then you can also easily do it with the Casper system and you can just attach a shoulder pad 
either on the bottom of your rig or on the back side of your rig and I use this all the time as well and I might do a future video just about the shoulder rig if you're interested let me know in the comments below. If I need to shoot some lower angle shots I have a top handle this one's also from Bright Tangerine it's also quick release so it's really easy to take off if I want to disassemble my camera for a gimbal shot for example but if I just want to shoot handheld with the camera on a top handle this is the one that I use. On the front of the top handle I have a small rig monitor mount and this is the one with the ARRI location pins so that nothing wobbles around and then I can attach my monitor to it easily. The good thing about this monitor mount is that I don't have to unscrew or screw anything and I can just move around my monitor for the best viewing angle. So I've been using small rig monitor mounts forever and I have hardly any complaints about them. Speaking of monitor, the monitor of my choice is the PortKeys BM72DS and this is a 7 inch touchscreen monitor and it works really well with the Red Komodo X because it also features camera control. And the great thing about the port keys monitor that even separates it from the much much more expensive small HD monitors is that you can control your camera via Wi-Fi and you don't have to have a control cable running from your monitor to your camera. Granted the OS as well as the camera control is nothing compared to the original one from the red monitor which is way better but you can easily do everything you need and you can change all the settings on your monitor quickly easily and considering it's a fifth of the price I think it's definitely worth it to get the port keys monitor. It's also much much brighter than the original red 7 inch monitor and again I've been using this with the red Komodo and the red Komodo X and I have absolutely no complaints. Let us stay on the topic of monitors for a second because as I've already mentioned we are using this with a crew so we have at least a focus puller and probably a director or even a producer watching our footage while we shoot so I want to have a wireless transmitter and the system that I'm using is the one from DJI. And I've been using this for a while now with different kind of camera setups and I have to say this setup is absolutely amazing. It's blazing fast so we have absolutely no problem of pulling focus with it even when we have some faster scenes. It's absolutely reliable and the range on this is absolutely crazy. There's different versions of it now so you can either hook it up to the original DJI 7 inch high bright monitor and then you can just pull focus from there directly or you can also get a separate receiver unit and then you can hook it up to whatever director's monitor you like. I have both so I can also use it with the 7 inch and I can use it with a director's monitor as well. So I have the smaller 7 inch for a focus puller and then I have my Atomos 19 SE for the director or the rest of the crew. Another really cool addition for the Cine rig is the tilter enclosure for the DJI transmitter because now we can just put it as a V-mount battery on the back of our Red Komodo X and we don't need to power the transmitter separately and it also has path through so we can just hook a battery to the back of our transmitter and then we have this really nice and compact unit and it powers through the camera so we don't need to actually have this powered separately. Tiny warning, you need to turn on the transmitter and you need to wait until it is fully turned on because before you do this, there is no pass through to the camera. So make sure to have this powered on before you plug in your SDI ports because of the SDI protocol. And if you're wondering about these really cool, nice braided high quality 12G SDI cables, those are from Formcave and you can get them in any kind of custom colors as well as custom lengths. Though all of my cables are from Formcave and if you want to get 10% off, there's a link down in the description and you can use Damien Cooper as a discount code. Last thing about the monitor, the monitor is powered via a DTAP cable and the DTAP cable goes from a locking pin on the monitor directly onto our V-mount battery. So let's talk about the V-mount batteries a little bit. I chose ones from CG Cine. I really like them because they come in different capacities and they have a lot of different ports. And this is something that was really important to me because in the beginning I was thinking of getting an expansion unit with like some expander ports as well as more power ports. But I realized that for this kind of rig, I don't actually need it if I use a CG Cine battery because it features two D-tap outs as well as two USB PD outs and ins. So 
So not only can I charge these batteries via USB-C if I wanted to, but I have enough juice to also power accessories like my follow focus. And we'll talk about this in a second. And this is important because not a lot of V-mount batteries have USB-C PD out and a five volt USB out usually isn't strong enough to power a couple of these accessories like my follow focus, for example. Another thing I really like about the CG Cine batteries, and this is also why I chose them, is because they have an LCD screen on the back. So I can just press a button and then it shows me the percentage left. And this is really important if I have all this big Cine setup, so I can constantly check if I have enough battery and I need to switch my batteries because I usually like to keep my camera on for the entirety of the shoot and only change batteries if I have to. And with this rig and all the accessories that I'm powering with it, if I have a full day of shooting, usually three of these 160 watt batteries get me through the entire day. CG Cine also has 200 watt batteries. They also send me their complete new lineup, which is even better for the Red Komodo X because now the DTAP isn't blocking it if you're not using the transmitter on the back. But unfortunately they didn't arrive in time, but you'll probably see them on this channel when I'll be using this camera in the future. Now we've already talked about the follow focus and the follow focus that I'm using is the brand new Nucleus Nano 2. And for all of the cine lenses that I have, this is actually perfect. It's not the highest grade professional use and there is some features from way more expensive units that this is missing, but for everything that I'm using it for, it's actually totally sufficient. And I love the OLED screen on the side handle and the wheel. And it's really precise. You have a lot of options. You can also put in some marks digitally so it vibrates when you hit them. Overall, I really like this setup and it's really small. You can power it via USB-C from the battery as I've already mentioned. And overall, I really like this setup. But here your first AC can obviously use whatever follow focus unit they wanna use and they can just attach it via a 15 millimeter rod that is attached with a 15 millimeter rod clamp directly to the bright tangerine top plate. When it comes to media, I'm only using CF Express cards from Angelbird. I have a two terabyte version right here and this also is totally sufficient to shoot through a lot. I have multiple of these. This is the CF Express Type B card. This is also the new version that accommodates all the data rates of the Red Komodo X. And I've been using Angelbird for years and years and I never had any problems. And all of my cards are Angelbird. So near the end of the video, the only thing that we're missing is our filtration solution as well as our mount solution. And this is probably also the most complex. So let's get right into it. So as I've already mentioned, I want to accommodate all kinds of different lenses and mounts. So that's why I'm going for a front filter solution and not a solution where the filter is included in the mount. Because again, I would have to have one version for EF, one for PL. And if I'm shooting on RF lenses, I can't use it at all. So let's start with the mount adapters. All of the adapters that I'm using are from Metabounce and their Cine version. And they have this really high quality Cine version, which also comes with a locking adapter. So I have RF to PL, I have RF to EF, and I also have RF to EF and PL with a speed booster included. So if I want to use full frame lenses and I want to get a wider field of view, I can also use the speed booster inside. And the really cool thing about that combo of the Red Komodo X as well as the Metabounce speed boosters or adapters is that we have a locking mechanism on the Komodo X as well as on the adapter. So now everything is really tight. And this was a big problem with the original Red Komodo. If I wanted to pull focus on bigger cine lenses that I always had this wobble and I had image shifts. But here, since the Red Komodo X has a locking mechanism, and all of the Cine adapters from Metabones also have locking mechanisms. And it doesn't matter if it's EF, RF or PL. That means that everything is secure. And even with a lot of torque on my focus unit, I have no problems with image shifts. So now let's move on to the filtration. I'm using the Bright Tangerine Misfit Kick 3. And this is my favorite matte box of all times. Because not only does it look really cool, but it's also really, really versatile and accommodates for everything that I need. What's really cool about the Bright Tangerine Misfit box is that it's so easy to adapt to different lenses. If I want to shoot on 80 millimeters, 95, 114, you name it, you can just change the adapter plate 
within seconds and you don't need to fiddle with any kind of adapter rings to go lower and a lot of the matte boxes like my other matte boxes they max out at 95 millimeters so if i want to shoot on a 114 millimeter cine lens i can't with the bright tangerine misfit kick i can the bright tangerine misfit kick consists of all carbon fiber and this makes it really really lightweight and even though it's quite large it actually is lighter than a lot of their smaller counterparts you have different ways of attaching a matte box to your lenses you can either use a 15 millimeter rod clamp and then it also has this nice swing away function where you can just turn it to the side which makes it really easy to change lenses i for this example just opted for attaching it directly to the lens via the clamp on mechanism but you can attach it however you like but now let's talk about the actual ND filters. We have two trays of four times 5.65 ND filters. And here you can just put in solid ND filters that have the highest quality. I'm usually using Nisi filters and I'm using a solid infrared ND filter. And the infrared ND filter is also great to counter the infrared pollution that the Red Komodo X has when shooting in sunlight. So I have solid stops of ND filters. So I'm using either a one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to the seven. So this is the highest quality that you can get when it comes to ND filters. And if I wanna add some more filtration because I wanna diffuse my image a little bit with soft filters, I can also use some soft diffusion filters in the second tray. The really cool thing about the Misfit Kick is that it can also be adapted to a three-stage matte box. So if I want to have a third filter in there, like a circular polarizer, or if I'm shooting anamorphic, I want a diopter in there to really get close to my subject, then I can do so. And this also really doesn't require any work. You can just extend the matte box and then put in a third filter. And if you don't need the third stage, then you can revert it back. And again, you don't need any tools and it's really quick and easy. The cool thing about this ND filter solution is that it grants me the most control over what I'm shooting and it also gives me the highest quality because I'm only using solid ND filters. And again, I can combine them however which I like and that way I can just dial in the exact ND filter that I need and I can also use diffusion filters or even effect filters if I wanted to. The downside is of course that it takes a lot longer than a variable ND filter or something that is already in the adapter where I just have to change some cartridges because just finding out the right ND filter for your scene and then changing it manually takes a little bit more time than using any other filtration method. But as I've already mentioned, this is meant to be used with a crew. So you usually have a first AC or even a second AC that just takes care of the filtration while you, the DP, are already setting up something with lighting or the scene in general. And there you have it. I hope I didn't miss anything. And if you have any questions about the Red Komodo X Cine Rig, then leave them down in the comment section. And if you're interested about any of the parts, I have links to them down in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. And I would really like for you to subscribe because there will be a lot of videos of this Cine Rig in action, behind the scenes, some shot breakdowns, a short film we shot on well, this rig, but the OG Komodo. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. And I hope to see you on the next one.